Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again. Is it Monday already? That weekend flew right by. Well, back to work tonight, though, guys. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Hope you had a great Monday in the markets. But it's back to work Monday evening, getting ready for Tuesday's trading session. We have a lot to cover tonight. Pretty choppy markets here today, but I'll take some really nice trades setting up for Tuesday's trading session. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video that we get a game plan to make some money on Tuesday. Before we jump in and get this party going, though, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. And if you guys enjoy the video, do me a favor, will you? Hit that like button for me. I appreciate you guys supporting this YouTube channel and watching it this evening. But enough of the intro, right? Let's get this party going. Where's the Where's the easy money going to be? on Tuesday. Well, like I mentioned earlier, got, got, some, got some sloppy, choppy price acts in the NASDAQ and the S&P, but you'll see tonight the game plan for tomorrow is pretty straightforward. You know, the NASDAQ and the S&P, we have two ranges, right? Two ranges on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Whenever we have multiple ranges in one trading session, again, pretty choppy market, but you'll be surprised the game plan tomorrow is actually remarkably simple. And I'll show you guys how to make some money with multiple ranges. We have some buying opportunities. We definitely have some selling opportunities. And we'll definitely pick up where we left off last week with some traps, right? The money really, the money on Tuesday will be trapping in traders on both the S&P and the NASDAQ. I'm going to go into more detail on that tonight. Don't you worry. The oil is a pretty straightforward chart right now. We had a little bit of a dust up um, in Iraq, I believe it was, uh, over the weekend. And, uh, of course, prices now look like they might be going back to that big round number, that $100 a barrel. Nice strong run higher here on the crude oil. I have three, maybe four different ways to trade this market tomorrow. Uh, three are very, very easy trades I'm looking for tomorrow. And I'll toss in one bonus trade just in case we get lucky on the black gold, the Texas tea, the crude oil uh, tomorrow morning. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all the good stuff about the buy side and the sell side on the crude oil. Now, speaking of tomorrow, tomorrow is a Tuesday. We have a lot going on this week. Why don't we grab a look here at the news calendar for tomorrow? Big news tomorrow is at 10 o'clock Eastern time. I've got, boy, two really big news reports. Got consumer confidence at 10 a.m. And then, of course, the Fed's favorite number, that jolts report at 10 o'clock as well. I would imagine tomorrow, if there's, if there's one hour, if you could only beat your desk tomorrow for one hour, that 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour, probably going to be a time you want to be paying attention tomorrow morning. And, of course, we'll be we'll be in the trade room tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And so we'll have a front row seat for that tomorrow morning. That's the big news there for for tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern time. We do have some Fed speakers. We got Barkin speaking. We got Williams speaking. I don't think these Fed speakers are going to shake things up too much this week. I think the market heard the Fed loud and clear last week, right? They, The whole world pretty much was telling us last week they're trying to raise rates to kill inflation and unfortunately trying to kill the economy uh, along with it. So I don't think I don't think the Fed speakers got a couple of them this week, right? Barkin and Williams tomorrow. We got Mester and Bostic, of course, as we go later on this week. I don't expect the Fed speakers to be that big of catalysts this week. I would expect, though, the consumer confidence number, that jolts report on Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Chicago PMI on Wednesday. ISM manufacturing jobs on Friday. Boy, there is no shortage of catalysts this week. And, of course, got a holiday weekend coming up this weekend. So I'll tell you, if you're not excited about this week ahead of us, you, de you definitely should be. Big moves last week. Big news here this week. Holiday weekend. Great, great week to be a trader. So 10 o'clock, we call the 10 o'clock shock in our trade room. Don't miss that 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock hour tomorrow morning in the trade room. We'll trade the reaction to that news. Be aware of that for tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Back to our charts, though. The money is in the charts, right? The news is noise. The news might get things moving, but the money is made on the charts. Now, guys, whether you trade one of these markets or you trade all of these markets, make sure you watch all the way to the end because I'm going to give you different trade ideas, different trade variations as we go deeper in this video here tonight. You're going to learn something new throughout the entire lesson. I do try to save the best stuff all the way to the end, so I'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the end. All right, let's go one, two, three, NASDAQ, S&P, and we'll wrap things up on the crude oil futures here on the video here tonight. Now, over on the NASDAQ, a couple things here. First of all, that's a 4,000 tick chart 
on the NASDAQ. You can always see all the specific time frames in the upper left-hand corner. And keep in mind, everything I talk about on the NASDAQ can pretty much be applied to the S&P. And what I talk about on the S&P can pretty much be applied to the NASDAQ, right? This, of course, is they're very much interchangeable, and you'll see they're very, very similar. So I'll try not to repeat myself too much on this as we go into the details here for tonight. What's the most important factor on this chart right now? Well, there is overall a bear bias. You know, we had that big monster, monster, you know, that 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 uh, that bull trap that we talked about in last Thursday night's video. Oh, yeah, we definitely got the bull trap. I definitely wasn't expecting the market to collapse as far as it went, but we kind of had an idea. We're looking for something like that, you know, uh, uh, late last week, right? So we finished up the week last week with that big just bloodbath move going lower and for the most part right we we want to try to stick to the sell side overall anytime we see a real strong move down like we saw last week we know traders are trying to wait for that pullback and sell it back down to retest the low so we definitely do have an overall bearish bias and i would like to be a seller but you'll see tonight though i think there's a lot of great buying opportunities as well because the market will likely have to come back a little bit higher here to attract in more bears because the size of that move down from last week. The second thing here, which is probably the most important clue on this chart, are the two trading ranges. We opened up, of course, this morning with a nasty trading range in the overnight. We then pretty much popped up into another trading range. And remember, whenever we have two trading ranges, the kind of the key thing that you want to think about is, is first of all, when you combine these together, what's going to happen is the market's going to try to fill in that middle. Right. If you're looking at like a market profile or a volume profile on this, you would see a lot of volume here, a lot of volume here, and the market will ultimately try to trade back and forth and fill in this area. So if you understand the idea behind two trading ranges, then you know that it's a little bit tough to make money consistently being in the middle, but the money is made going up and selling it back down, going down and buying it back up. If you've taken my free trading classes on the website, on at the website schooloftrade.com, you know that ranges are magnets. And so we want to sell high, we want to buy low, right? That's kind of one key component to having multiple trading ranges. Try to avoid the middle and try to pick the edges, right? Sell the top and buy the low. And we'll talk about how to do that here in a few moments. The next thing you want to kind of think about though is, is ask yourself, what is the most recent trading range? For example, this range happened overnight, right? It was like midnight to, uh, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, really, before we get that opening bell breakout. The more recent range is the one we saw at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Now, why is that more important? Because that's the one that really takes the precedence. You probably have heard people say before, recency is always more important. Whatever happens most recently, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's more important. So if you understand recency and the way recency works, we just went up into that trading range and we're now underneath that trading range. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's, there's a good chance now the market will want to rotate and run back up and really, for the most part, complete what I call a pendulum swing going higher. Now, at that point, the buyers may blast out and run higher. I get some levels up top there at 12,736 to 12,786, or we may end up right up here and we may end up dumping back down into that trading range. So I guess the, the, the kind of the key takeaway on this is, is that we have multiple multiple ranges, so I want to be selling high and buying low, avoid in the middle. And kind of the secondary part of that is, is the, the short-term momentum of this. Again, we're overall bearish, but the short-term momentum, that bullish into a trading range, should want to go higher here. And from there, we'll see if we even get that short back down again or if we get that blast going higher, which in all reality would make perfect sense because of the size of that big move down. you got to think the sheer size of that move down from last Friday means there's going to be a lot of bears up here waiting for this price to come up high enough so they can then sell it back down. It's a lot like what happened last week, right? Last week, we began with that big move down from the previous week, and we slowly grinded our way higher pretty much all week last week until we got that big drop on Powell's speech on Friday. So knowing all this information, what I want you to kind of think about here as we go is I want you to think about these kind of key sequences here. Think about a strong move up, 
a retest of that high, and then a move right back down into that trading range. A strong move down, a retest of that low, and then back up into that trading range. I want you to think about those moves, right? Like back here, we went higher, strong move up, retest the high, and then back down again, right? We go higher, strong move up, try to retest the high, right? And then back down we go. Think about that same thing now as we go higher. Now, I'm going to talk about how to buy it off the low, and we'll talk about how to buy it as we go higher, and of course, how to sell it as we go higher. Let's talk about the long side going first here, because that's the one that has the most recency behind it. And it wouldn't surprise me tomorrow if we do get another leg higher here. Again, look back at what happened last week. You'll see a very similar kind of song and dance that's playing out right now. Here's what you want to think about. I want to think about now, as the market goes higher, I want to try to find a way to buy it on the pullback, take profit at the high, and then short that sucker back down again. Okay, here's my favorite way to do that. Let's say, for example, the market takes off to the upside and we end up getting a nice strong run going higher, right? At this point now, we'll take out some of these highs. This will be a very strong move higher there for the bulls. Anytime we see a strong move for the bulls, we expect to get a pullback and a retest of that high. So keep that on your radar as we go. What I'll do is, is I'll go out and find a new trend line off the highs. I'm going to bring it down to that low, find myself a bold channel, and the goal of this will be getting underneath the moving average and trapping in the bears underneath the 21 EMA. I want to see a strong move up. That gives the buyers that short-term momentum. We anticipate a retest of that high. I'm looking to trap in the bears underneath the moving average, trap in the bears underneath the moving average with what I call a failure pattern, and then use their stop losses as the juice I need for that run going higher. Now, there's a lot of ways this can work. Let's say, for example, we pop up, we pull back, we blast higher. I find my channel. I mark off that channel. I get underneath that 21 underneath the moving average, we trap in those bears and we then go back up and retest that high. Now, perfect spot for those buyers to take their profit, perfect spot to trap in more buyers and use their stops for fuel going back down into that trading range. Let those buyers now try once, try twice, think about where their stops are and we'll sell right into those stops going lower. So imagine now we see a nice strong breakout going higher. We find that new bull channel. We use what I call a seller failure pattern right below the moving average and we take our profit back at the high. Once we take our profit at the high, then we trap in the weekends, right? The buyers should not be buying way up there. They should be buying down here. Once those buyers come in, try once, try twice, I can then use their stop losses. Because remember, at that point, even though we're long-term bearish, we're still quite bullish in the short term. So I need to trap in those buyers, use those stops as fuel for what I call a two-try failure. Now, we're talking a lot about failures right now, right? We get a, a seller failure, a buyer failure. Listen, I know that most of you guys have taken the free trading class on the website. You know how much I love failures, trapping in traders below the moving average, right? Or trapping in the buyers, buying too high. I know most of you guys have taken the course. You've learned all the failures and the traps. But listen, if you're here for the first time, if you haven't taken our free trading course on our website, you got to grab that link. I'll put a little link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. If you're one of the few folks who haven't taken that yet, grab that link. That will take you to our free trading class. Learn that strategy. The strategy I teach in our free trading class will get you into more winners, help you avoid some easy losses, and give you a ton of confidence. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading. I'll tell you, if you're missing too many good trades each day or you're taking too many losses, the strategy I teach in that free trading course will get you right on the right track nice and quick. So watch that strong move higher. Watch that pop up that breakout going higher, and then look for that, again, that new channel, that 
double right that double top reversal and right back down again that's a very very likely scenario here as we go higher here's another thing that you should keep an eye on as we go higher as well let's say for example now let's say for example now we pop up and we begin to grind going higher okay we call these the pop and grind right most popular dance my, my favorite dance move on the internet right now right the pop and grind I'm kidding with you obviously we pop up and we start grinding higher if that happens same basic idea mark off those highs mark off that low in that situation look left find some prior swings and grab those traps underneath prior swings get those failures below the moving average and hit them right where it hurts take that profit at the high right trap pattern failure pattern i know these might be new to you but again you'll learn all about traps and failures and all the pattern setups we use in our trade room you'll learn that in that free trading course as you go right so trap pattern failure pattern take that profit off at the high right and then again one two and we look to dump it right back down as we as we go here okay keep your eyes on that move as we as we go higher here that's my game plan for being a buyer as this market breaks out remember stay out of the middle right stay out of the middle that's going to be the most dangerous place to be trading on this what what if we go lower though what if we go lower what if we take out those lows can i buy down here can i sell down here why don't we take a look at that on the s p we've got a good idea now for what the nasdaq wants to do here next up here let's grab a look here at the e-mini now again the s p is gonna be very very similar to the nasdaq so everything i talked about going higher will basically apply here to the s p 500 this is a 10,000 tick chart on the s p and of course you could trade the spy trade the micro s p it's it's all pretty much the same stuff now you'll notice right now in the s p right lots of overhead resistance just that we have on the nasdaq i would love to get i would love to get a nice strong run going higher find right find one of those channels get that pull back make some right make some profit on that pullback retest that high and then one two and then back down into that trading range right it's a pretty easy idea there okay now as we go lower stay out of that middle right the middle of these ranges always where good trades are going to fail this trading range right this range again like the nasdaq i want to go down to those lows and ultimately now okay so we talked about we let's 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 back this up for a second so what do we know about the context of the market right now the context of the market is this is not just a bull channel and a couple of ranges okay think about what happened last friday last friday we had that big big bloodbath move going lower so you have to think about this it makes perfect sense that sellers would want to sell high right sellers want to sell high just like buyers want to buy low so it makes perfect sense for this market to want to go higher a little bit you know give us a chance to buy it up and then sell it right back down into that trading range that makes sense doesn't it because at that point the sellers are able to sell high up there that's why i like that short right that two try i like the idea of up double top and then one two and then shorten it right back down into that trading range now think about this as we go lower would it be a good idea to want to be a seller down here would it be a smart idea to sell low here's the catch even if we haven't given the bears a chance to sell high yet if you want my opinion the answer is no unless we hear something new overnight right all things equal you know that's the one thing i don't know is i don't know what's going to happen coming out of asia i don't know what's going to happen coming out of europe i don't know what the white house will do and you know i don't know what's going to happen overnight so unless something changes overnight right could be a fed speaker that says something alarming right that spooks the market so unless we get some fresh news headlines that really make the market panic it's very unlikely you have a lot of bears waiting down here right if I, if I if i if i had my guess right now i would imagine that strong move down that we saw that kind of continued into today everybody has their profit targets back at that low right the bears are going to sell off those highs they want to get back to that low and we should see probably a bit of a stop squeeze right we'll probably see it overshoot that low but i'll tell you 
this this is a this is a great place to trap in some of those bears and be a buyer going back up into those ranges. Remember, ranges act like magnets. So I think it's very important for us right now to understand the context of what's going on, right? If we go up and the bears can get in and then we go all the way back down, now remember, we don't want to sell low. Okay, so how do we make money on that? What would be a couple scenarios here to buy it and to sell it as we go? Now, I talked about this earlier. I talked about that move lower, that pull back, that retest, and that move back up, right? Okay. I like the idea of the buy, but not, but not, but, well, let's put it this way. I don't like the short, right? I don't like that short. Why? Because again, we're selling low. And if you think about what happened last week, right? Go back and look at last Thursday, last, oh, sorry, two Thursdays, two Fridays ago, into what happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday last week. We're going to want to grind higher to attract more bears unless something new comes out, right, on the news headlines. So I'm not a huge fan of that short because it doesn't accomplish the goal. It doesn't allow us to sell high. We're selling relatively low at that point. I like the buy side. I like the buy side here, unless we can get a breakout going lower, which we'll cover here right now. So, a couple things we wanna think about. As we take out that low, remember, bear momentum, right? We're still very bearish. Here's where a crown reversal comes in, in, into play. What we're probably going to see is we'll probably see them overshoot that low and take out the pendulum swing, which is basically just a symmetrical move off the high of that trading range. Hopefully they will. Take out that low, and then here's what you want to look for. You want to look for what I call a crown reversal. Now, what's a crown reversal? A crown reversal is a two-try failure with a trap set up. Remember, what's the concern? The concern is we're bearish, but we're too low to sell. So let's trap in some of those weak hands. Let's get, let's, let's, let's get some of the rookie sellers coming in here. Let them try once. Let them try twice. Now, what you have to remember, when you're trying to call a reversal in an overall bear market, you need to buy as low as possible. Because as the market goes higher, there'll be more bears coming in as it goes higher. So the so where, 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 where I'm getting at with this is, is you want to get a trap below that low. Okay, this is going to be the best way to buy this market. And you can see a good example right here, right? We go lower. The bears try once, the bears try twice. There's a little trap right below that low. That's the pattern setup we want to see over here. Okay, so we take out that low, mission accomplished. The bears retest that, that low from earlier this morning, which is based on this continuation from last Friday's move. We trap in those bears, we let them try once. We let them try twice. These are the weekends down here, right? We want to buy as low as we can, and we're buying that two-try failure with a trap. And again, it has to be a trap in this situation because we don't want to buy high. For all I know, the market will go up and dump right back down again, right, as there's more bears coming in. I don't want to buy high. I want to buy low. Very important to use that crown reversal pattern to buy that low. Now, Imagine now, we take out that low, right? We go, we go up now, the buyers come in, they try to buy high, they get trapped, and we retest that low now. Mission accomplished. Now, I can be a lot more aggressive. Now, I can let the bears try once, let them try twice. I can draw a trend line off that low. I can draw a hidden channel off that high, off that low, and I can buy now going back up into that trading range. What's the difference here? The difference is, is the retest, okay? That's the difference, okay? Just like we talked about that bull trap in last video, in the last video last week, right? Last Thursday night, we talked about to call that top, you wanna go up, double top, and then short it, right? We wanna get that double top. We want the buyers to buy, let them take their profit, and then we can sell into the weak hands from there. Same thing, we go lower. Right, we retest that low. Now the bears are already in, right? All the weekend bears are coming in, and now what I can do is is I can look for this sequence going lower. Strong move down, they retest that low. Now watch for this sequence as it comes off that low. We trap now in the bears, right? Let them try once, let them try twice. Where are their stops? Their stops are sitting right here, right? Stops are sitting right here now. Again, I wanna be buying right into those stop loss because I need that fuel, I need that catalyst to run back up into this trading range. The bears are already in, right? The, 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 the smart money bears, well, 
I don't think that's smart, selling low like this. But again, the stronger sellers are right there, right? These are the weak hands, the ones who are selling right into those lows. Once those bears get stopped out now, once we know their stops are, we can now look for that short squeeze and run it back higher. Now, at this point, where does the market want to go at this point? It's going to want to go up and take out these highs. So what we're going to do is, is now look left, find a new channel off that low, or find a trend line off that high, find a channel off the low, and then go in and grab the trap that comes in right below that low, okay? This is a beautiful way to trade a reversal in a bear market with a range above us. Again, we're not trying to pick that first bottom, right? We'll use that crown reversal for that one because that one's more likely to come back and retest that low. I don't want to buy high. But once they retest that low, okay, once they retest the low, then we can get a lot more aggressive. We rope in those bears. We let them try twice. We think about where the stops are, and we buy into those stop losses. Once we get that price going higher now, we find that new channel. We know now where the market wants to go, and I'm looking for that first pullback. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying it right now. This could be a trap setup. It could be a failure setup. It could be a pullback setup into a strength move. You'll learn all this stuff, by the way, again, inside that free class, which I mentioned earlier, is linked up in the upper right-hand corner. So I really like that sequence, right? I like that sequence. We take out that low. It's a crown reversal to buy off the low or we let it bounce, let them retest, right? And we look for that one, two, and buy up. And then of course, from there, we find that channel and we're buying that first pullback off the low, no matter which of the entry patterns that we get off of that low. I really like those trades as well. That way we can avoid the middle, we can trade the edges. And again, this will also apply to the, to the NASDAQ as well, right? Everyone talking about right now in the S&P, can be applied to the NASDAQ. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet is, is a breakout, right? What if we what if we take out this low, right? What if we pull back to the moving average and the bears don't struggle and go back higher? Now the bears come in and they blast off that moving average, right? What if we get one of those one, two, three jumps? Now remember, this is a range. Right? We're going to see a lot of those very convincing moves that will fail and come back into that trading range. So if I can take out these lows, if the bears come in now and hold the pull back to the moving average, and if they really rip, right? if they really jump off that moving average, what do we call this? It's a one, two, three breakout pattern. Now, anytime we see that much of strength coming off the moving average, and I want to remind you, we did not see that at any time today, right? There was no time today where we really jumped and ran away from the moving average, okay? So don't predict these things. It doesn't matter how strong that first leg down is, okay? The stronger that first leg has nothing to do with it, right? It's the strength of that second leg coming off the moving average, or as I call it, a one, two, three breakaway move. Once that happens, mark off that low, mark off that high, find those prior swings, and grab that, as we always say, that first test is the best test. This could be a trap. This could be a failure. This could be a pullback combination off the high of it. And again, you'll learn those entry patterns in that video course. Where do the bears want to go next? I've got 39.50 as we go lower. So don't be surprised here if we see it take out that low, we pull back to the moving average and we blast right off that moving average. Again, we'll probably also see some very juicy headlines, right? There'll be something big going on. The whole world will be panicking. That's the sentiment we're going to need to combine with that move. Find that low, find that channel high. And again, again, I'm obviously simplifying this right now. We'll find traps. We'll find any entry off that low. Or let's say it takes out that low here and we begin to grind and grind and grind, right? That happens all the time too. We mark off that low. We find that big channel hidden off that high. We drill down. We find those prior swings. We grab our traps, our failures, our pullback combos coming in off of those highs as well. All right, 39.50 is our next big objective as we go lower, all right? Now, guys, that could also happen to the bulls too, 
right? Let's say, for example, you know, we talked about this earlier, how I would like to get that kind of one, two, three, right? Mark off that new channel, grab that pullback, right? And then, of course, my thought is, is I'll grab the pullback because I know that anytime we see a real strong move like that, we're going to probably get a retest of that high. And my plan was to look for the buyers to come in, try once, try twice, and then short that sucker, right, into those buyer stop losses. But maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe it keeps on going. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Neither do any of you, right? None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We happy to be ready to, to take what we get. What if we break out and go higher? Right? What if the market rips and runs right through it? Right? What if we get one of these where we go jumping up, right? The buyers come in and they just tear right through all these levels of resistance. Now, it doesn't seem likely, right? It doesn't seem very likely tomorrow, but hey, is it possible? Absolutely it's possible. If that happens now, what do we do? Do we buy way up here? No, no, we buy low. We buy off the low of that channel. We mark off that high. We mark off that low. We buy the pullback. We take our profit. And again, we wait to see if we can trap in those bulls at that high, right? So remember, don't, right? Remember, that strong move could probably want to go higher, right? If it keeps on going, keep on finding those new channels. Keep on buying those pullbacks off those lows. Keep taking that profit off at the high and keep on looking for those ways to trap in the buyers getting in late, right? This is the way you want to trade. This is the way you want to trade an overall bear market with a short-term bull bias, right? Buy the pullback, trap them in, and sell it back down, right? Run it, run it back lower, get that, get that retest, trap them in, and right back up into that trading range. I'm excited. Get some big news for tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this thing will all hold up here overnight. Hopefully no crazy moves overnight, but uh, we're ready for it here tomorrow. What do you think, by the way? What do you think? Am I, am I crazy to want to buy this market right now? What do you think? I'd love to know what your feedback is. What's your game plan? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. Let's wrap things up here now on the crude oil. Crude oil, now that you guys know my game plan on the S&P and the NASDAQ, you'll probably be able to kind of anticipate what my game plan is for us here as well, right? Now, we're pretty clearly bullish right now, right? We've got a, uh, well, look, look, at a, look at a four hour chart. Look at a look, look at a uh, you know an hourly chart right now. You'll see we're look we're looking pretty bullish. Um, and I think a lot of this was caused by some uh, some headlines coming out of I believe it was Iraq, right? There was a a bit of commotion there at the U.S. embassy, and so anytime there's a dust up in the Middle East, the price of oil just naturally wants to go higher, just to kind of the way the oil price works. And because the price of oil is very much news driven, we know that new, those news events will definitely move you know move this market. The most important thing right now is is we have a bull bias overall, which means we do want to be a buyer. You know, that's probably where the easier money will be here for tomorrow. And we have a big move higher. Now, why is a big move higher a real, a real big clue? Well, first of all, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we expect? A pullback and a retest. Okay, once we get there, do we break out higher back to 100? Or do we trap in the buyers and dump it back down again, right? This looks very familiar. We just talked about on the S&P and the NASDAQ, doesn't it? Right? It's the same exact game plan. Okay, now, the most important thing, though, is it's a relatively big move higher. Now, it's not as good as those $7, $8 moves we were seeing earlier on this year. But you can see, right, it's a, it's a, it's a $5 move, right? We go from basically 92.30 at the bottom up to 95.30. It's a $5 move. You know, a few months ago, I would have said this is nothing, right? But nowadays, you know, $5 moves are a pretty big move. Historically speaking, anything more than 3 or $4 on the, on the oil is a pretty big move, right? We've had, we, we had a couple of years back there where oil would barely go $2. So we've been definitely spoiled with some really big ranges on the oil. This is a pretty big move. Why is a big move important? A big move says, just like the sellers want to sell high on the NASDAQ and the S&P, yeah, a big move says the buyers would like to buy nice and low on the crude oil. If I had it my way, I'd get down around this 95 level. Oil loves big round numbers. Buy that 95 and right back up to retest the high. So think about how that's going to play out. Now, let's think about the game plan now for us as we go. What would be my big concern here? Buying high right? Buying high is my big concern at this point. So if I have, when I, when I think about a big move in one direction, I always think about three types of pullbacks. You ready? One of them will be a very shallow pullback. 
And because shallow pullbacks don't exactly get a lot of the big bulls excited, we have to look for bears to come in and trap in those bears. Okay, like I always say on these videos, shallow pullbacks are great for traps. Deeper pullbacks are great for failures. So if all we get, you know, for example, right, this channel is coming about that low. If all we get here is a little tiny pullback here, right, moving average comes over, the bears come in, they're trying to sell this thing going higher, I can grab that trap for that retest of the high. Not my favorite trade, but it is a valid setup because, of course, we can trap in some of those bears off the high. What is a better trade for me would be a much deeper pullback, right? We go, we go now into this area here. This is the first buy zone off the high. We now, of course, remember, a lot of bullish momentum on this thing. We pull back below the moving average. I'm hoping the bears will come in and think this thing is a reversal. And once they sell it, Think about now where their stops are, and I can now use their stops as fuel. I can look for a seller failure below the moving average, and I can grab that first pullback as long as it's before we retest that high, right? We call these failure into pullback combinations. Now, let's talk about the one I really want tomorrow. The one I really want is a really deep pullback. I really like to get somewhere down around this area right there. 95 is a great sweet spot. You gotta be thinking a deep pullback is what everybody wants because everybody wants to buy low. So on a deep pullback, we have a fantastic opportunity to risk small, to earn large, right? Risk small, to earn large. Remember though, anytime you have a great risk reward ratio, you should instantly, immediately be worried about momentum, okay? Anytime you have a great risk-reward ratio on a trade, is a trade-off. To get a good risk-reward ratio, you have to give up momentum. So in this example, it's a very deep pullback, which does what? Remember, anytime we see a strong move, we have to expect they're going to want to retest that low and then go back up, right? So if we, if we know how those strong moves work, we want to now use that to try failure. Let those bears try once. Let them try twice. Why twice? Because the pullback is so deep right? And the deeper the pullback goes, the more the bears are going to pitch a fit, right? The more they're going to fight that. It's not going to be as easy as just buying the stops. But once we get the patient sellers, we get the more disciplined sellers coming in. Once they're all roped in, now we've got them right where we want them, right? How do you get out of a short position? You buy your way out. So, and this is why I love those deep pullbacks whenever we see a big move, trap in those bears and use those stops. Now, oftentimes what will happen is, is the market will rip higher. You can grab that new channel, drill down, find that prior swing and grab that trap. Okay, we talked about this briefly before on the S&P. This is a really nice, clean example of it right now. This is the same basic idea of buying off the low on the NASDAQ, buying off the low on the S&P, right? Like I said before, buying at the low of that trading range. We trap in those bears. As the market then runs back up, we don't chase it. Remember, the objective is to go back and retest the high. We buy that first pullback off of that channel. And then what do you think? Where do we go from there? Do we break out and go to 100? Or do we trap in the buyers and short it back down again? We see a lot of this kind of song and dance. We'll get that deep pullback. We'll trap in the bears, right? Trap in the bears, go back up, retest the high, right? Buyers are buying low. They take their profit off at the high. Meanwhile, all the inexperienced traders who don't know any better yet, they haven't paid their tuition to the market yet, and the buyers come in and they go, oh, we're going back to 100? Buy here. Remember, it's bullish. So if you want to sell a bull market, you want to get A, a major turning point, B, signs of exhaustion from that to try rule and then three or C I guess I would say right you want to use stops as the catalyst right at that point now we can sell it back down where's my target target is always back down to retest that low and then from there guess what we can do it again let them try once let them try twice are you are you smelling what I'm what, I, what, I, what I'm stepping in over here right are you are you getting down with this make, make sense right we buy that deep pullback trapping the bears take profit back at the high. Again, this is pretty much exactly what happened last Friday morning, right? Buy the deep pullback, 
take profit back at the high. Obviously, last Friday, it dumped and rolled over, right? But if they hold at those lows and the bears can't do it, remember, it's an overall bull market. This becomes one big trading range. Is this making sense? Can I get a hell yeah in the comment section? You better hit that like button for me too if you enjoyed the video here so far tonight. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow night's video. So again, this is the sequence I'm looking for, okay? Now, let's say, let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate. Right? Let's say, for example, now that we pull back, okay? And the headlines are saying, oh, no, we were wrong. There's no problems in the Middle East. Everything's just fine and dandy. In fact, we got too much oil, right? Let's say, let's say news headlines come out and they're very, very bearish for oil, okay? Now we pull back the bears once, but now they take it lower. Yeah, see, now, now the bears have not failed. Now we have that one, two, three. What do we do? We now we now go into short mode, right? We now mark off that low. We mark off that high. And again, I'm simplifying this right now. We look for that short off the top of that channel. Guys, you'll see a lot of examples of these pattern setups in that free trading course, right? So keep it in mind. I'm only covering the basics here in this video newsletter, all right? Now, an easy way, an easy way to find the target on these reversals is the first leg and the third leg. Okay, anytime I get one of these one, two, three moves, the first leg and the third leg are almost always symmetrical, right? You know, they're very, very close. So when I get that reversal off the high like this, if we go out, take out that low, or maybe we get one of these, right? We don't pull back to the moving average and blast, okay? That'd be your one, two, three reversal. We don't get that. Now we get the pop and the grind right? YouTube's favorite dance move, the pop and grind channel, mark off that low, mark off that high, right? Go back, find some prior swings, get above that prior swing. It's usually where the best entry will be. Get above the moving average, trapping those buyers, and we're running it back down again. Where do we think the market wants to go down here? Remember, first leg, right? First leg, third leg. That will give you a really easy way to pinpoint where that big objective will be as we go lower. You would you would think, right? You would think, obviously, taking out that low a day would be what they would want, right? So keep an eye on that reversal, right? And remember, it also goes like this, right? We go up, we retest that high, and then all of a sudden now, right, we get underneath that moving average, one, two, blast, and we're finding that new channel going down from there, right? We're buying that dip, we're selling off that high, the bears take it one, two, three, and we're jumping in on that short off the top of that channel, all right? Hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. I know I'm covering a lot here right now. One more here, one more thing to keep in mind, okay? What if we keep on grinding going higher, right? What if we don't pull back? What's the game plan then? Nothing changes, okay? If we keep on grinding higher, wait for shallow pullback trap, right? Because again, it's a big move. We want to buy as low as possible or a deeper pullback, get underneath the moving average, trap in those bears for that failure or a really deep pullback, one try, two try, light those stops up for that retest back at that high, right? Shallow pullback trap, modest pullback failure, deep, deep pullback, my favorite, the two try failure as we go. All right, guys, so keep an eye on that sequence as we go. And if we keep on grinding higher, I'm going to keep on staying patient and wait for that nice juicy pullback to retest the high, and then we'll look for possible shorts coming out from there. All right, guys, how did I do tonight? What do you think? Did you like the video? Did you hate the video? Let me know in the comment section. I would love to know what your feedback is, what your game plan is for tomorrow and the rest of the week here. So don't be shy in the comment section. And don't forget, this is the easy stuff tonight. Tonight, we're putting the game plan together for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll get back together in our trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If you're looking for a great place to learn and trade along, if you're missing too many good trades each day, or you're taking too many costly losses, if you're making a bunch of mental mistakes, what are you waiting for? Grab that free course, learn the basics, and come out and trade it with me every morning in the morning trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Tomorrow morning, I will see all the members there. If not, grab that free course link link, learn the basics there. That way you'll be ready to go and primed. Not and trade with us soon as a student and a member of our morning trade room. Don't be afraid to call the office. I'm always here. If you guys have any questions, call me up. If you have any questions, we got live chat. If you need help along the way, and you can always drop questions 
in the comment section below. Guys and gals, I'm out of here for now. Get some rest. Get a busy, busy day tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning in the members trade room. If not, same time, same place back here tomorrow. As always, be well. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.